From the Caribbean Isle they came leaving teaching, policing, and many trades they could not carry on to come to England where the streets were paved with gold. Enid Saunders came to Britain when she was a teenager. She talked to poetry to tell the struggles and the story of the Windrush generation who arrived in response to the motherland's call for workers, with the Midlands playing a key part in her poem. On the Windrush and Ascania they came to land at Southampton, Plymouth and Leicester where they all gathered as if they were in villages in Nevis. When you mention Leicester in the poem, does that hold a significance to you? It is um, in the way that we met um, people and we went back to, to talk about what we were doing and um, as children, now that we are older, we've got families of our own, how, how are we managing, what are we trying to, to pass on? Yeah. After surviving, participate we must, leave the negative mode behind in strange surroundings. You've called it from survival to participation. Why that particular title? Because um, people had to survive. You had the coldness from the weather, you had the coldness from people, and it was a way of integrating. The sudden change in climate played a major factor for families uprooting their lives to move to the Midlands. Mary King yes, from Newtown in Birmingham was one of them. To me, it was terrible, you know, coming from the West Indies, and I came up like September. Oh, it was so cold then, even though it was only September, it was very cold and so dark and foggy, you know. I thought, well, and when I saw all the smoke coming out from the chimney, and <laughs> wondering, if we was having a fire, <laughs> what's going on here? The whole place is on fire. You know, and my husband have to calm me down and say, no, that's how it is. Come up here, live in your nice home in a big garden in the country, and to come up here and just live in one room. People found it difficult in terms of um, you've got one room to do everything. And um, the funniest bit for me was that if people were visiting when you started to touch your hair, it meant that it's time to <laughs> you go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, say, what do you mean by when that? I, um, whether it's brushing your hair, combing your hair, whatever it is, that, that was your preparation to say, because you're living in one room, your bed is in one corner, your table to eat is in another corner, and so everything was done in this room. Memories shared by Dr Desmond Jadu. He regularly meets those from the Windrush era who have settled across the Midlands, and in particular in Birmingham. Whether it was community work, culture or religion, he says that generation has made their mark. It's a beautiful church, isn't it? It is, it is. And it, it's a testament to the Windrush generation why many of these churches are still within the community and importantly as well the black community because the Windrush generation actually built the black church in the UK. Desmond says the affinity shown for England and its ways by the new arrivals wasn't so alien as earlier thought. They came here as British citizens and, you know, they came here as a part of the empire. And importantly, they see Britain or England as the mother country. They didn't see that I'm going to a foreign land. They saw I'm going to my homeland. After years of sacrifice and service to Britain's cause, is it now time to teach the next generation about Windrush? Why should the generations following us care about Windrush. I mean, it happened, you know, decades ago. If you look at transport, manufacturing, you know, um, sports, uh, entertainment, if you were to remove that contribution from Britain, I think Britain would be a duller, sadder place. And I think that contribution needs to be fully recognised. And it's, it's only, again, because what's happened with the whole Windrush scandal that people actually understand that this, con that this generation and the sub subsequent generations have made a difference to Britain that we've not really acknowledged properly, not really valued. So I think that applies, and that applies to the wider debate around migration, that migrants from different parts of the Commonwealth and different parts of the world have played a key role in Britain, and we should celebrate that in a very positive way.
With many 70th anniversary events happening across the West Midlands, I've been to meet students at the Wigiston and Queen Elizabeth I College in Leicester to hear their thoughts on the Windrush story going forward. Yes. And uh, what's this about? Today's topic is the Windrush. Okay. So tell me, how much did you know about Windrush before the recent news articles? Only until recently I find, found out like the actual details about it, whereas before I just sort of heard of it, but I wasn't actually taught it at any point in my education. It's something that I think we have a responsibility to be aware of because it still shapes events in our society today. I think that Windrush can't be irrelevant now because there are so many people here now that are shaping our society that were brought here by Windrush. So we can't just discount it as something in the past because it'll always have an impact on British society and British culture. Light skin is best, straighten the hair with hot comb and curling tongs. In its poem portrays the struggle she and many had into settling into new surroundings, difficulties documented in private and since shared with the world. You're prettier with straight hair, prettier like whom? Be proud of who and what you are. Be positive, create positive images. Des Coleman, ITV News.